On August 20th, 1910, the wind began to blow in the northern Rockies and didn't stop for two days. Hundreds of small fires cycloned in a perfect storm that would consume anything in its path. Fire lines that held for days were overrun by 70 mile per hour blasts of wind and flame. Over three million acres would burn in just two days. And this was a thousand year fire. It was off the scale. Nobody had seen anything like this. Nothing with this complex of things in the mountains like that where people were there in harm's way. We reached the mine just in time for we were hardly in when the fire swept over our trail. One man tried to make a rush outside, which would have meant certain death. I drew my revolver and said, the first man who tries to leave this tunnel, I will shoot. I did not have to use my gun. Ranger, Ed Pulaski. Eventually they all passed out from asphyxiation and some died either from asphyxiation or drowning in the, the muck, but the rest lived as they began making their way out of the entrance, found the body of Ed Pulaski crumpled up on the ground. They thought he was dead. I did not know how long I was in this condition, but it must have been for hours. I remember hearing a man say, Come outside, boys. The boss is dead. I replied, Like hell he is. He was temporarily blinded. His lungs were a mess. In the meantime, somebody had gotten out and gone to town and as far as the town understood, the whole crew had been wiped out. So Pulaski's wife, Emma, is under the expectation that her husband is among that number. How we got down, I hardly know. We were in terrible condition, all of us hurt or burned. I was blind and my hands were burned from trying to keep the fire out of the mine. Our shoes were burned off our feet and our clothing was in parched rags. We were covered in mud and ashes. Later, as we dragged our way down through Placer Creek, we were met by some women from Wallace. They had hot coffee and whiskey. And although we appreciated the kindness of those brave women, we could take nothing but cold water. Ranger Ed Pulaski. The flames of the Coeur d'Alene raced towards the towns of Wallace, Mullen, Taft, Saltese, Avery, and many more. Well, there were a number of communities at risk. And these are wooden towns. They're made of wooden roofs, wooden sidewalks, wooden buildings. They're, they're extremely vulnerable to fire. Around 9 o'clock on Saturday night, the flames rushed into Wallace from Placer Creek, where Pulaski's crew had been. Spot fire started on the east side of town. Mayor Hansen ordered the alarm to be sounded, and the townspeople became hysterical. Run for your lives! The town is going to burn! The newspaper building became engulfed in flames, and the Sunset Brewery burned while beer poured out everywhere in the streets. On the middle fork of Big Creek, Ranger John Bell's crew of 50 had been working in conjunction with Ed Pulaski's crew. With the fire chasing them, Bell led his crew to the homestead of John Beauchamp. Surrounding the homestead was a two-acre clearing with the creek running through it. Most of the crew laid down in the stream for protection. Seven others, including the homesteader Beauchamp, sought shelter in a small storage cave that had been dug to save his belongings. As the fire reached them, trees started falling in every direction. One tree came down over three men lying in the creek, instantly killing two of them. The third man had his legs pinned under the tree and screamed for help. There was nothing anybody could do. He perished in the flames along with the seven people who sought shelter in the cave. Ranger Debit was in charge of the Avery District. Sensing imminent danger, he sent the deputy sheriff to Setzer Creek to warn a crew of 70 to evacuate back to Avery. But 28 decided to stay back because they felt the ranger and the deputy were exaggerating about the fires. All 28 men were later found burned to death on a hillside. The largest single loss of the crew, we don't know what happened, but you can see them retreating slowly sort of up the hill. Imagine them sort of doing whatever they could and then finally coming into a small stand and just being overrun by the fire. 